So the Pro Cup final here at the Grosvenor Cup at Hooton Park in Merseyside. Peter Stott and Nick Brookman, and then Jim Rutledge and Chris Taylor. Nick Wilkinson in fifth position. Just seven points between them in qualification heat points. So it's still fairly even, but it could all be very much to play for in the first couple of laps. This is the circuit that doesn't lend itself to drivers getting it wrong. Standing start in the Pro Car final, of course. We're under starters' orders, and Peter Stott has held the lead into the first corner, but it looks pretty tentative. He had to work there to keep Nick Brookman behind him on the run to the first corner. But the drivers are now charging their way through. Great pictures from the drone. We're going to get a run for third position. That's going to be Chris Taylor diving through on the inside of Jim Rutledge. And he gets through. They're going to be side by side off the turn, though, as Chris Taylor has the nerve and audacity, as far as Jim Rutledge is concerned, to overtake him and then say, right, don't pass me back. Let's go after the big boys up front. Come back for Chris Taylor in this one. I don't think he's been in the car for some time, Chris, but uh, back in this one and back in a reasonable position there in third place. Peter Stott and Nick Brookman have battled throughout the earlier heats. You'll see those in the uh, summary of those in the TV show. But uh, this is the final, dedicated this final just for the uh, the online coverage. Great to see Chris Taylor returning to karting. It's a bit like riding a bicycle, isn't it? Or in my case, it's a bit like falling off a bicycle. Once you do it once, you know how to do it the rest of your life. Uh, so <laughs> Chris Taylor charging after Nick Brookman, and he is definitely putting him under some pressure through the double left apex up to the chicane. And you're going to see the difference between pro karts and the cadets as they work their way through, hugging the curbs big time. Yeah, here comes Taylor. He's looking pretty spicy in this one. He's quicker than the man in front, and he knows it. He fancies the job here, no doubt. You just see the body language. He knows he's quicker oh, than Brookman in front. Big and wobble. here he comes down the inside and through the gate at turn two, Chris Taylor into second. Yeah, big switch from Nick Brookman. He ran wide and that was all the invitation Chris Taylor needed. So number two is P2 and that's two overtaking moves in the space of four laps. So very nicely done indeed there from Chris Taylor. He works his way forward and that is now P2. Now the big question is, is there enough pace in the tank to go after Peter Stott. There might be pace, but looking at the gap that's already opened up, that's going to be very tricky. Oh, I think this race is well, it's over. It's it does look over, doesn't it? It's over, Jake. He's got about a four, well, that's a good 50 metre lead. Oh, my word. It's 1.4 1. 1. seconds quicker in lap time pace. I know that Chris Taylor was pulling off an overtake, but he was pulling it off on the way to turn two, so he wasn't really scrubbing off any speed there, really. Yeah, he would only have lost maybe two, to, two tenths, three tenths of a second maximum. This will give a truer indication of what his absolute outright pace is, and I say that, he's actually being close here by Brookman, so Brookman now fancies the job as he gets closer through the exit of the double apex. So this is the interesting battle on the track for second and third. We'll see what Chris Taylor's lap time is this time. Well, it's 41.8. Last time, 40.5 for the leader, and Chris Taylor goes through at 41.09. So half a second slower. Yeah, it's a quicker lap from Nick Brookman as well, though. He gets into the 40s, so 40.9. He only just made that, actually, by a thousandth of a second, strangely enough, Nick Brookman. 40.999. Somebody call the cops and tell him that he's got a big battle on his hands. Chris Taylor just 96 thousandths of a second slower than him on that lap. There's nothing between Taylor and Brookman. And watch out for Jim Rutledge. I don't think Jim's going to give up on a chance of a podium either. Well, Nick Brookman definitely fancies this now. His cart's coming to him, and he can gauge his braking on what the man in front, Chris Taylor, is doing. Stop there on the 26 cart, well clear going through Vauxhall. But this is the battle of second and third, and as you say, Jake, Jim Rutledge, he's not giving up the ghost either, is he, yet? Well, all Chris Taylor and Nick Brookman need to do is start battling, start duking it out for position, and suddenly Jim Rutledge looks like he's got a chance at a podium. Yeah, absolutely. This is the battle on the track. Obviously, again, a bit like the last race. We're not going to see much of Peter Stott. Does he care about that? Absolutely not. Not one he just iota. Want, he just wants that 22-carat <laughs> gold Bob Wilson thousands of pounds trophy. That's what he wants. That'd be fantastic for Peter Stott to walk away with that. A nice little memento for the mantelpiece. Look, he's just gone. He's consistently in the 40.4s, while everybody else is uh, suitably impressed if they duck under 41 seconds for the lap. So Peter Stott very much large and in charge out in front. Nick Brookman setting his personal best, though, at 40.944. Just a few hundredths off the pace of Chris Taylor. If he could just get close enough to start knocking on the door of him. And look, Chris Taylor checking over his shoulder. That's quite early for a pro-kart driver to be looking over the shoulder. Even he clearly feels 
Well, yeah, I'm in second position, but Brookman is definitely throwing everything at me. Yeah. Brookman definitely closer coming through the S's this time. Through Stanlow, the final bend. Stanlow all refinery off on the left-hand side of the circuit, of course. I have to say, there are still certain curves that the drivers are not taking here, even in the pro carts. And I've seen in the past they get quite aggressive through some parts, but not on the final bend, certainly. Negotiations are underway, Jake, for the UK Kart Series that uh, we've been filming this year. We're going to be live streaming and filming, that's the plan anyway, for next year, the UK Kart Series. Negotiations already underway to come here, and we know that the pro kart grid in that is full. Oh, it's sort of 30 plus drivers. Imagine 30 plus pro <laughs> karts going around this track. It's going to be awesome, and I hope these out there, I think they can. They can uh, be a guest driver in that series as well. I hope all of these drivers take the opportunity to come and be part of that because it will be fantastic. Big slide, big slide by Brookman going through the turn one there at Vauxhall. Certainly was. I can barely imagine 15 around Hooton Park, never mind 30. It's going to be well, biblically they, good. This is a small grid for uh, normally, it's usually what, 10 or 12? It is indeed. Here, but for some reason, it's quite low numbers this weekend. But. Wow. Uh, UK Kart Series, uh, the Rotax classes, Junior Rotax, all you local guys, you can do the UK Kart Series as a guest round, and I'm expecting that to be a huge entry. 160 it was uh, last weekend at uh, uh, Wilton Mill. Great racing we saw, but the Pro Kart grid, the biggest grid in uh, senior Pro Karts and some of the best Pro Kart drivers in the country. So I hope these guys and others that race here at Hooton Park We'll be looking at that and thinking, yeah, I need to take part in that as a guest, no doubt. Well, I could probably put the dwindling numbers in this particular event down to three factors. You've got to take into account that there's a wider world. First of those, British Grand Prix week. Yeah. So obviously record attendance for British Grand Prix. I think I think it's something like 480,000 expected British Grand Prix weekend. Second, it's been one of the wettest summers on human record. So a fair few of the drivers will probably think, you know what, I need a holiday. I need some proper sunshine. Not this uh, British vast attempt at it. Go on, Jake. Prove that you're not a fan of. <laughs> well, the third one is obviously going to be a European Championship. Oh, you uh, that's remember. That's taking place you in uh, various different uh, teams from various different nations uh, well, with a ball going around a, yeah, a pitch. Yeah, the Euro final is on on this Sunday, Jake. <laughs> yeah, England playing Spain. <laughs> So I have a feeling there's going to be quite a few people out there for that, of course. Right, Peter Stott, Chris Taylor, Nick Brookman, Jim Rutledge, Nick Wilkinson. They are the five that uh, are my people. They're the people that do not uh, disappear from a racetrack for anything. Last that begins, Chris Taylor, I have to say, fair play to him. Considering he's been out of the seat for quite a while, he has actually started matching Peter Stott for lap pace. His last lap was a 40.8, but the one before that was a 40.5. So if you take it in context that it's been quite a long time out of the seat for Chris Taylor, the pace is still there. He just needs to rekindle it consistently. And then he's on terms with this man, but certainly Peter Stott, look at him. He's tapping his steering wheel. He's just cruising home. He's like Toad of Toad Hall in the Wind of the Willows. He's out for a proper jolly on a Sunday afternoon as Peter Stott cruises home, happy and jubilant. Wonderful run for Peter Stott as he comes off the final turn. Chris Taylor comes over second, and he's delighted with that. Considering how long he's been out of the seat, he's got every reason to be jubilant. Nick Brookman, third position from Jim Rutledge and Nick Wilkinson. So it is a victory then in dominant fashion for Peter Stott. Six seconds clear of the comeback kid, Chris Taylor, who made up two places to be P2. Nick Brookman in third, Jim Rutledge in fourth, and Nick Wilkinson rounding out the field. Not a bad effort from the famous five in Pro Kart.